Last week, I promised you that I would continue on with my message in Ephesians concerning who you are and what you are. This week, I'm going to continue on, and I think I'll just entitle the message today, I am. I am a Christian. I am saved. I am blessed. I am glorified. <laughs> I am in God's care. I don't think you could put many more I am's to it than that. So let's just call this message I am. Because the great I am is the author and finisher of our faith. So we might as well say, well, I am in him. Let us go to the first verse of Ephesians 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. At one time I was dead in trespasses and sin. But God has quickened me. And I am no longer dead. I am no longer caught in trespasses and in sin because I'm a witness that God truly has delivered me through His Son, Jesus Christ. It says, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Satan today is working in the children of disobedience. You can tell by the breaking of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, thou not, shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. All of these commandments are being broken by the children of disobedience today. The children of disobedience are being highly trained through the medium or the media of television, newspapers, etc. You never hear anything good anymore. Very seldom ever hear anything good. The news today is not news, it's just the praising of the devil and what he's doing. Everything evil. I wonder why the news media can't find something good to talk about for a change. Why not get some spirit-filled preachers up there and have them on for the news broadcast so that they can give you some good news for a change? Well, I've got good news for you today, folks. And here it comes. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But listen to this fourth uh, verse. But God, who is rich in mercy, now that's good news, for his great love wherewith he loved us, he loves us, that's good news, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, that's good news, by grace are you saved, or by Jesus Christ are you saved, now that's good news, and hath raised us up together, and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now that is good news. That's better than hearing about, well, so-and-so was killed in a car wreck yesterday, and the rebels blew up another embassy. <laughs> that isn't news. That's just praise of the devil. Praise of the children of disobedience. Those that don't know God. I hope I'm enlightening your minds to what's going on now. That's why Jesus said, take heed what you hear. You don't have to listen to that stuff. Get you a Bible, a good old King James Version. Start reading and studying a Bible and hear the good news. Read this instead of your newspaper at night. All newspapers are good for, as far as I'm concerned anymore, is to start a fire in the fireplace. <laughs> you folks enjoying this fire in the fireplace today? I sure am. It's kind of nippy out here in British Columbia right now. The weather's cool and a little snow on the ground and frost and a little ice here and there. But you know, it's just wonderful to be here. You can go from a nice warm house right out into that crisp cold air, go out and pet my horses and check my animals out and just talk to God in peace and in quiet out here on the farm. Well, you folks have the same power to do the same thing. Just start enjoying what you've already got and God will give you more. Just start enjoying it. Don't hoard it or love it, just enjoy it. God will do better for you. Because he said, we're sitting together in heavenly places in Christ. All the riches of heaven and glory are at our fingertips if we want them or need them. So start enjoying what you have instead of worrying about it. Worrying is bad news. <laughs> Loving and being loved is good news. It says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. It says in the ages to come, that means eternity. He's going to show the exceeding riches of his glory and of his grace. 
He's going to show us the exceeding riches of his Christ and the good things that he's got for us. Now that's good news, isn't it? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. You see, you can't save yourself. God has to do that. But you can make the effort to be saved and to be blessed. And if you're already saved, you can make the effort to go on and be glorified, justified and sanctified. You just make the little effort. It says, be ye holy. You get holy. God doesn't make you holy according to the word you do. He says, be you holy. You do it. You know how now? I've been telling you for the last 13 weeks exactly what God wants you to do. <laughs> and I'm going to keep on telling you as long as you want me to. Just let me know that you want me to keep on speaking to you and helping you. And I will. Write me a letter. Make that little effort. Tell me in the letter what you'd like to know about the Scripture. Ask me the questions. It's like I said, be sincere. I, don't, I have no pleasure in fools. The word fools means godless one. I don't write in a bunch of foolishness. I won't even answer it if it's foolish. But if it's uh, pertinent to the Scripture, I'll answer you and bless you with any kind of an answer that God gives me through prayer. I'll tell you the truth. I'll let you know exactly what the Lord showed me and my staff. I have a wonderful staff here, many, many people to help me that are filled with the Spirit and love you very much, even though they don't see you. Let's go a little further in the Scripture now. It said that we're not saved of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now you folks that think you're going to get into heaven by your works, forget it. Won't work. You've got to have faith mixed with those works. Now faith. Works won't get you in. All your works will do is just give you something to boast about in the natural. They're not worth a hill of beans, unless they are mixed with great faith and love and joy and peace then your works will be accepted before the Lord. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, he says here, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Well, we were just a creature before Christ Jesus came in. Now we are a workmanship created, or a created workmanship. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord guides us. The Spirit of the Lord does the works. Not by right nor by might, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Ye must be born again. Ye must be filled with His Spirit. Jesus in one place said, Be ye filled with the Spirit. Be filled with it. Not half full, not up to here, not right here, or not right to there, or even to there. You've got to have it overflowing. David said, My cup runneth over. Have the Spirit running over. I've seen people get so full of the Spirit and run out of their eyes in the form of tears. They would be so tender and so gentle and so meek before the Lord. It's a wonderful feeling. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the Word. You know, I remember when I had no faith, and when I didn't know the covenant of God, and had no hope in this world. And it was a horrible feeling. That was bad news. It was bad news for me. I didn't know it was news, but I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad the day after I got converted. I knew I'd lived in a bad situation. If you folks are tired of living in a bad situation in this world, just listen to me. I'll teach you how to remedy it. Trust me, have faith in God, and you and I will get along real good. I'm here to get along with you. I'm not here to fight you. I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to do it. I'm just here to tell you what God says to do and how to do it. Do it by the Spirit of the Lord. Do it in love and joy and peace. Do it, do it without being ordered or pushed. You know, God doesn't order people around. He doesn't push them around. He's meek and lowly. He'll speak to you in a quiet voice, in a good voice, in a sweet voice, one that you can understand, in a peaceable voice. He wants you to be in a peaceable habitation, not in tribulation. Let's go a little further here. Well, here's, what, here's the verse that covers everything I just said. For now in Christ Jesus, you who are times were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, 
who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You see, God has taken the middle wall of partition, that thing that came between you and God, whether it be sin or whatever, He's taken down that wall of partition. Well, let me explain that a little more. It's a spiritual thing. The rich man in hell lifted up his eyes and seeing Abraham afar off. Well, there was a wall of partition between the rich man in hell and Abraham in paradise. Well, he's taken away that wall now. He has put you to where you can sit in heavenly places on this earth. Where you can be at peace of mind, body, soul, and spirit right here on the earth. Because Jesus went into the nether parts of the earth and released the prisoners as they were men. Released the spirits. And now, when you leave this body, you go up or you go down. You either go into heavenly places in Christ or you go into the nether parts of the earth, back into captivity. Listen to this. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make to himself of twain one new man, so making peace. You don't even have to go out and shed the blood of goats and bulls and obey a bunch of ordinances now. It said he abolished them right here. It said he has, between his flesh, taken away the enmity of the law and commandments contained in ordinances. So if you're under a bunch of ordinances today and things that you've got to do and do this and do that, bead counting and candle lighting and walking on your knees and whatever, you don't have to do that anymore. Jesus did away with all that. You see, Christ is not on the cross anymore. Some people portray him as still a Christ on the cross. One that couldn't move or can't do move about or can't get around. No, he's not on the cross anymore. It said he was taken down from the cross, wrapped in, in uh, clean linen and buried and then risen the third day. You see, the cross doesn't hold him back anymore. The cross is only a symbol of what he represents. It's only a symbol of what he's already overcome. So just overcome these ordinances, folks, and start worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth and in freedom. Freedom of your own mind. Freedom of your own home. Freedom of your own personality. Let God use you. Let God hear from you according to the way you would like to talk to Him. He'll hear you according to your own voice, according to your own personality. You don't have to go through somebody else. You don't have to go through a string of beads or look upon a little old wooden cross somewhere that doesn't have any power in it. <laughs> That's an idol. Forget it. Worship Christ in spirit and truth, the Word. Worship Him in the Word and through the Word. Then you'll start gaining faith, power, and the gifts of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, uh -huh, gentleness, meekness, temperance, long-suffering, right down the line. God will start using you. Your life will change. You'll be able to walk in among sinners or saints and just feel at home, be able to look every man in the eye and smile, be able to tell them when they ask you, what are you smiling about? Oh, I found the Lord. He's wonderful. That's one of his names. Wonderful. The Prince of Peace. The Everlasting Father. Right down the line. I've got it. You know, I've never had to find it. I always so I had it. You see these signs on the back where I found it? Well, I've never lost it. <laughs> it was never lost to me. It's there all the time. You don't have to find it. It's there all the time. It's here now. So why don't some of you put some bumper stickers on and say, I never lost it. I've always had it. <laughs> It'd sure be cute. Mm -hmm. I'd like that. Found what? What's the it? Say, I found Jesus. Put one on there. Tell them what the it is. It's just saying, I found it. Put one on there and say, I found Jesus. <laughs> or I got Jesus. Make up some bumper stickers to that effect. Let's be positive for a change, okay? Tell, them what, tell the word what the it is. Tell them what the it is. You've got the it right here. It's all in the Bible. If you've got the Bible, you got it. you got the way, the truth, and the life. you got the road map. Well, I guess I better get back to Scripture. I get going here. I just can't hardly quit. No, these are only half-hour programs, and they go so fast, so if I talk too fast, let me know. I'll slow down. It says that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. You see, God preaches peace both to the saint and to the sinner. It says, to them that are afar off, the sinner, and to them that are nigh. I don't believe that I'm preaching to too many sinners today. If you feel that you are a sinner, just say, Lord, here am I, use me. 
Take away the sin and be a sinner no more. It only takes that long, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 4 seconds, half a second, whatever. It says, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We can get to God the Father through Jesus Christ, one spirit. The spirit of Christ within us, our hope of glory. Now, therefore, you who are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, it says, you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. There are still apostles and prophets today. Let me turn to Revelations 21, 14 for just a moment. And the wall of the city, this is the heavenly Jerusalem, had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb or of Christ. Now you talk about that heavenly Jerusalem that's going to come down when with Jesus. That's it. It's the foundation of the apostles and the prophets on resurrection day. That's the new heavenly Jerusalem. That's the wall of the city. You're getting the wall built right now around you. You've already entered into the heavenly Jerusalem if you believe the gospel. If you believe this word that Paul's teaching here today. Because it says, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. That's that heavenly Jerusalem that's going to come down. The saints that's already gone to meet the Lord is going to come back with Jesus on the resurrection morning or day. And we, the rest of the city that are waiting here, will go up to meet them. But the foundations of the walls are the twelve apostles. And the wall are the saints. Uh-huh. Even as far back as Daniel, it said, And the Lord shall return with ten thousands and thousands of his saints. With well, the new Jerusalem, the heavenly city. <laughs> Some people are trying to teach us it's going to be a bunch of buildings up there. What are we going to need material buildings for when we're omnipotent? A spirit hath not flesh and bone, as you see, Jesus once said. I'm not going to need a chair to sit in or a building to sit in. I know God's got glorious things for us, but it won't be like sitting on this chair today. Actually, this chair is very uncomfortable if you sit in it too long because the back's too straight. I don't want to have to sit in a chair like this throughout eternity. I want to be able to float through everything like Jesus did. <laughs> uh huh. I want to be able to see your glorified body as it is there. Mm hmm. God gave me a vision of a glorified body one time. Very beautiful. I was sitting in a church in Florida one time as I was pastoring a church in Florida. And I asked God to show me what the human soul looked like. And he did. The front door opened. I saw this lady come through and he translated her right before my eyes. And it was the most beautiful sight I ever saw. And from that moment forward, I have never seen... You people out there as natural people, in my mind, through that vision, I see you as beautiful, glorified bodies to be with throughout eternity. That's what God's saying here in his word in this 21st verse, or 20, 21st, 22nd verse, in whom also you are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. You see, since Christ hanged on the cross, we are no longer a natural type person but your body became the temple of the Holy Ghost. In one place it says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That's why God said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That's why he said, I will glorify you. He will put the Spirit of glory in you. He has put the Spirit of glory in you already. Many of you out there listening today. I know because your cards and letters tell me so. So you see, there's more to the gospel than just a little itty-bitty Bible story. God's people are sick and tired of itty-bitty Bible stories. They're sick of uh, just a little crumb of the pie when they can have the whole pie. They're sick and tired of eating hard candy when they can have good soft chocolate. Now, I'm using this for an example. Or a big, thick... Did you ever eat a German chocolate cake? Oh, there's something terrific. They're about six or seven layers thick, and they've got a thickness of chocolate in between each layer, at least a half an inch or an inch. Well, why eat an old sour apple when you can have a German chocolate cake? <laughs> or any other kind of chocolate cake? I'm just using that for an example because some of my relatives back there were 
of German descent. I'm sort of a Heinz 57, but I kind of hold to German cooking. I'm sort of a gourmet myself, and I like good things. That's why I chose the gospel, because it is just as good and much better than good cooking. If you love good cooking, then you'll love the gospel because it's just as good or better. I'm using that for an example now. You folks out there that want the good things to start happening in your life, start trusting the Lord. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on his name today. And even if you are saved, call on it anyhow and say, Lord, I just want to let you know I'm here. And if you've been silent before him in prayer for a while, say, Lord, renew a right spirit in me and let me pray. Let me get back to you again, Lord. Let me come back. I want to come back. Do it in the privacy of your own home and your own mind. Do it somewhere where you can be free before him. I see my time is getting away from me. It's about up. But I want you folks to know I truly love you. I know I say this on every broadcast. But I truly love you. Righteousness tends to belong So keep your love 